Hello, my name is Luke Taylor, and welcome to Family Guy, The Pilot, a one-man show. Boy. Tonight, I will be playing all the parts. It seems today that all you see is violence in movies and sex on TV. But where are those good old-fashioned values of which we used to rely? Lucky there's a family guy. Lucky there's a man who positively can do all the things that make us laugh and cry. He's a family guy. The Griffins are all sitting together in their living room watching The Brady Bunch. Mom, Dad, I found cigarettes in Greg's jacket. Greg, were you smoking cigarettes? No, Dad. Well, he's lying. There's no doubt about that. Greg, I'm afraid your punishment will be four hours in the snake pit. Mike Brady pushes a button on the kitchen counter, opening up a hole in the floor. Maybe a lot will give you some time to think about what you've done. Oh, man. Greg jumps into the hole. Smoking. How does a boy like that go so wrong? Well, they live in a crummy neighborhood. The Bradys? Ah, uh, hell yeah. They got robbers, thugs, drug dealers, ah, uh, you name it. An African-American woman wearing a red apron and a red bandana is seen outside of the Griffin's window holding a stack of pancakes. You folks want some pancakes? No, thank you. See, that's the worst we got, is Jemima's witnesses. Mom, my lips are too thin. Can I please get collagen injections? Meg, you don't need to change the way you look. You know most of the world's problems stem from poor self-image. A young Adolf Hitler is seen lifting weights. The camera turns to reveal a muscular Jewish man laughing as two <laughs> women feel his muscles. Stewie is seen in his high chair holding a screwdriver and a weapon resembling a ray gun. Excellent, the mind control device is nearing completion. Stewie, I said no toys at the table. Damn you vile woman, you've been peed in my work since the day I escaped from your wretched womb. Oh, don't pout, honey. You know when you were born, the doctor said you were the happiest looking baby he's ever seen. But of course, that was my victory day. The fruition of my deeply laid plans to escape from that cursed ovarian bastille. Return the device, woman. No toys, Stewie. Well then, mark my words, when you least expect Expect it, your uppance will come. Mom, can I turn the heat up? Don't touch the thermostat, Meg. Your father gets upset. Come on, this thing goes up to 90. Who touched the thermostat? God, how does he always know? Brain implant, Meg. Every father's got one. Tells you when the children are messing with the dial. A neighborhood dad shows up at the Griffin's door in a panic. Hey, Peter, my thing went off. Is your thermostat okay? Brian walks into the room. Whoa, ass ahoy. Hey, uh, Peter, it's 7 o'clock and you've still got your pants on. What's the occasion? He's going to a stag potty. Now, Lois, I work hard all week to provide for this family. I am the man of the house. And as the man, I order you to give me permission to go to this potty. Look, at least promise me you won't drink. Alcohol always leads to trouble. Come on, you're worrying about nothing. Oh, remember when you got drunk off the communion wine at church? And so the Lord God smote Job with vesturing boils all over his body. God is shown watching the pastor speak. Ah, oh man, I hate it when he tells this story. Yet miraculously, Job was still able to retain his dignity. Whoa, is that really the blood of Christ? Yes. Man, that guy must have been wasted 24 hours a day, huh? And then there was that time at the ice cream store. Ha, huh, butter rub's my favorite. Peter licks the ice cream cone and promptly passes out, causing him to fall flat on his face and break the table in front of him. And remember you had an Irish coffee the day we went to see Philadelphia? The Griffins are in a movie theater watching Philadelphia. The audience is crying. I got it! That's the guy from Big Tom Hanks! That's it! Funny guy Tom Hanks. Everything he says is a stitch. I have AIDS. <laughs> Lois, honey, I promise, not a drop of alcohol is going to touch these lips tonight. Cut to stag party. All right, who wants to play drink the beer? Right here. You win. All right, what do I win? Another beer. That's Quagmire. I'm, I'm going for the high score. Actually, Charlie's got the high score. The camera pans to reveal Charlie with his pants down standing in front of an opened grandfather clock. Hey, man, your clock won't flush. You know, I feel kind of bad, you guys. I promised my wife I wouldn't drink. Don't feel bad, Peter. Gee, I never thought of it like that. Hey, did you bring the porno? 
Did I bring the porno? Hey, you're gonna love it. Peter holds up a VHS entitled Asablanca. Listen to me, Elsa. If I take this thing out and you're not on it, you'll regret it. Maybe not today, maybe not tomorrow, but soon and for the rest of your life. Come on, Lisa, get it on! Ilsa begins taking off her clothes, but the film is quickly interrupted by an image of the Statue of Liberty. The statue was originally a gift from France. What is this? Aw, oh, man, my kid must have taped it over for history class. The Statue of Liberty? What are we gonna do? Boys, boys, we're gonna drink till she's hot. Hey, man, giggity giggity, that's just crazy enough to work. Meg, finish your pancakes! The camera moves to reveal that Peter is laying on the kitchen table. Brian, Meg, and Chris and Stewie are eating, and their food and silverware is on their father's body. Chris, elbows off your father. Thanks, son. 37 beers. Wow, you're setting a great example for the kids, Peter. Yeah, a new record. Way to raise the bar, Dad. Chris, you're 13. Don't talk like that. Now, kids, Daddy only drank so the Statue of Liberty would take a clothes off. Peter, what did you promise me last night? I went and drank at the stag party. And what did you do? Drank at the, oh, oh. I almost walked right into that one. God, it feels like accountants are cranking adding machines in my head. The camera zooms into Peter's head, revealing two accountants working. Dick, you ever wonder what's outside those walls? Now say that's dangerous thinking, Paul. You best stick to your work. Huh. Okay. You see, Peter, hangovers are nature's way of telling you I was right. I mean, you- Lois's chair breaks. Mom, are you all right? My goodness, this chair leg was loose. Isn't that silly? I could have broken my neck. Dad! Suspenseful violin music plays. Look, honey, I took a cab home. I slept on the table so I wouldn't wake you up. Nothing bad happened. Well, I guess you're right. Apology accepted. All right, I'm going to work. Somebody's got to put food on this table. Peter is shown sleeping in front of a conveyor belt that is carrying toys. Peter! Huh? Are you sleeping on the job? Uh, no, there's a bug in my eye and I'm trying to suffocate him. Peter, I like you, but I need you to be more than just eye candy around here. It's your job to watch for any toys that can be hazardous to children. Now look sharp. Yes, sir. Cut to Quahog 5 News. And now back to Action News 5, our top story tonight when toys attack. Quite a situation we've got here, Tom. Quite a situation we've got here, Tom, indeed, Diane. It seems the happy-go-lucky toy company of Quahog, Rhode Island, has released several unsafe products into the retail market. Come on, baby Heimlich, spit it out! The child squeezes the doll and several pills come out of its mouth. Peter, I am appalled! Your negligence has damaged this company's reputation! You're fired! Ah, jeez, for how long? Cut to the Griffin's house. Oh my god, you got fired? Way to go, Dad! Fight the machine! How do you know about the machine? Nah, don't worry, kids. Your father's still gonna put food on the table, just not as much, so it might get a little competitive. Who cares about food? Now I'll never be able to afford my lip injections. Hey, uh, Peter, can we put her out in the yard for a while? Okay, who's hungry? Ah, jeez, how am I gonna tell Lois? If she finds out I got fired for drinking, she's gonna blame me. A devil appears on Peter's shoulder. Lie to her, it's okay to lie to women. They're not people like us. I don't know. Hey, where's the other guy? The angel that is meant to be on Peter's shoulder is shown in a long line of cars. Come on, you bastard, I'm late for work. Ah, oh. ah, oh, jeez, well this is perfect. Look, I don't want your mom to worry, all right? When she worries, she says things like, I told you so, and stop doing that, I'm asleep. So I'm not, I'm, I'm gonna tell a little lie, okay? Now not a word to your mom about me getting canned. What's that, Peter? Oh, uh, nothing, just the uh, I lost my job smells great. What? Uh, Meg, can you pass the fire in my ass for negligence? Peter, are you feeling okay? <laughs> I feel great. I haven't got a job in the world. All right, then let's eat. Now, I know you all hate eggplant, but... A laser beam shoots right by Lois's face. What on earth was that? What the deuce are you staring at? It's tuna fish and nothing else. Stewie pushes a button, causing the firearm barrel sticking out of his sandwich to retreat. Cut to front yard. Hey, Peter, how's your job search going? Oh, it sucks, Brian. I've already been through two jobs this week. I got fired off of that commercial. Peter is shown wearing a bird outfit and holding a bowl of chocolate cereal in front of camera. Try it again. <clears throat> I'm caca for cuckoo puffs. Oh, damn it, take 26. Yeah, then I had a job as a sneeze guard for that salad bar at the restaurant. Peter is wearing a security uniform and standing next to a salad bar. An old lady begins to sneeze, and Peter puts a gun to the old lady's head. 
Take it outside, lady. Peter, I know it's a dangerous precedent, but you might just want to tell Lois the truth. What? That I can't provide for my family? That she's always right? That I didn't really stand up to that tank in Tiananmen Square? Three tanks are seen rolling down Tiananmen Square. A Chinese man pushes his hand forward to signal the tanks to stop as Peter nervously stands next to him. Ha, huh, screw this. I just came over here to buy fireworks. Peter, you can't keep lying about your losing your job. Sooner or later, she'll find out you're really where you're really going every day. Flashback. Lois is sitting on the couch watching, watching television. Peter is hiding near the door with a lamp on his head. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I'll tell it at night. Cut to the kitchen. The kitchen door opens, and Stewie walks in with a flashlight. He jumps forward and pulls out a grappling hook and aims it at the ceiling. Stewie grabs the mind control device from the cupboard. Victory is mine! Peter, I'll need the checkbook in the morning. I'm going to the stop and shop for some sweet corn. You're spending money on food again? Lois, we just had dinner. Well, you know, I enjoyed it so much, I thought we'd eat again tomorrow. Since when are you so concerned about our food budget? Well, I just, uh, Lois, this is really hard for me to say, but... What is it, Peter? I, uh, you're, uh, getting kind of fat. What? It's just, it's not healthy. Peter, I do my Jane Fonda workout tape three times a week. When was the last time you saw your toes? Gee, man, I thought you people were supposed to be jolly. Peter, what the hell is the matter with you? Honey, you know, if there's something wrong, you can tell me. Peter's angel pops up on his shoulder. Hey, sorry, man, I'm late. What did I miss? Oh, thank God you're here. What do I do? A devil pops up on Peter's angel's right shoulder. Tell him to keep quiet. He's in too deep. Oh, I don't know. Peter's angel looks at his left shoulder. Hey, where's the other guy? Peter's angel's angel is stuck in traffic. Ah, oh, this is unbelievable! Stewie aims his mind control device at Lois. Well, well, mother, we meet again. Stewie, I thought I talked to you in an hour ago. Not tightly enough, it would seem. And now, you contemptible harpy, I shall end your oppressive reign of matriarchal tyranny. You can play with your toys tomorrow, honey. Right now, it's bedtime. Lois puts the mind control device back into the cupboard and picks up Stewie. Blast you with your estrogenical treachery! Sweet dreams, kiddo. You have the power to end this! Brian enters. Hey, how'd she take it? Eh, I told her she was fat. Brian takes his newspaper and smacks Peter over the face with it like a person would normally do to a dog. No. No. Look, I hate like lying to Lois. It's just, it's the best way to keep her from knowing the truth. Peter, you don't have a choice. Your unemployment is going to dry up soon, and she'll probably send something to miss when they repossess your house. You really ought to think of your family's welfare. Oh, jeez, Brian, that's a great idea. Cut to welfare offices. Okay, do you have any disabilities, past injuries, physical anomalies? Oh, I, uh, I didn't pass gas for the first time till I was 30. A 30-year-old Peter is sitting in a beanbag chair and reading a newspaper. He breaks wind. What the hell was that? Peter runs up to Meg, Chris, and Brian. He's holding a check. Guys, our money problems are over. We're officially on welfare. Come on, kids, help me scatter car parts on the front yard. Uh, how much are we getting? Let's see, uh, 150 a week. Wait, Dad, that's a comma, not a decimal. A close-up of the check reveals that it's for $150,000. Whoops. Cut to Lois in the kitchen. No, I haven't seen Peter all afternoon. I was giving a piano lesson. Arrows fly by and hit the chair that Lois is sitting in. Stewie, why don't you go play in the other room? Why don't you burn in hell? Well, no dessert for you, young man. Cut to corner of the street. Boy, who would have thought getting drunk at the stag party would have gotten me $150,000 a week from the government? This is why I don't vote. Hey, maybe somebody down there was drinking too. Mr. President, why do you think the American public has continued to support you despite these impeachment hearings? Bill Clinton is shown at the podium holding a martini. Probably because you're fat. Ah. Peter, you might want to call the Welfare Commission. That check is obviously an oversight. Well, not necessarily. Maybe I'm their one millionth customer. What? You're going to spend $150,000 a week? Yeah. On what? Cut to front yard. Oh my god, Peter, you bought the statue of David? Nah, I just rented it, but they're going to be ticked. The penis broke off while I was loading it into the car. Peter holds up a large cement penis and throws it. It goes through Mr. Weed's window. He picks it up. I shall call you Eduardo. Peter, how can we afford this? You're not going to believe it, Mom. Dad's getting a big raise. Peter, that's wonderful. 
But dad, I thought the kind of raise that allowed me to give you, my kids a big allowance just for keeping the big mouth shut. Come on, you guys, I'm gonna buy us the most expensive meal we've ever had. Cut to fast food drive through Yeah, I'd like uh, 6,000 chicken vaginas, please. I beg your pardon? Uh, 6,000 chicken vaginas and a sausage biscuit, please. Cut to the Griffin sitting in the living room. Peter, what's the big surprise? Lois, you know how I always said you should be treated like a queen? Well, I got you your own jester. Peter claps his hands and a jester looking exactly like Jerry <coughs> Seinfeld walks into the living room. Hey guys, good here to be in New England. And what's the deal with New England anyway? It's over 200 years old. And last time I checked, it's not even that new. Cut to cosmetic surgery. Huh, this is great. I can afford only, finally afford to give my little girl the lip she's always dreamed of. Thank you, Daddy. Meg hugs Peter and kisses him on the cheek with her new lips. I don't know, Peter. Lips are one thing, but did you have to buy breast implants for Chris? It makes him happy. Chris walks into the room holding two breast implants in his hands. Hey, these are cool, Daddy. Cut to front yard. Lois is shown tending to flowers near a moat surrounding the house. A male woman walks up. When did you guys get a pool? Oh, it's a moat. I know it's silly, but my husband thinks our family needs extra protection now that we're rich. Does it work? Well, it does keep the Black Knight at bay. The Black Knight is shown at the other side of the moat with his horse sputtering. Yay! Well, congratulations on all your success. Here's your welfare check. What the? Lois is interrupted by a foghorn noise from a small boat that Peter is driving. Chris and Meg water skiing behind it. Hi, honey. Lois looks at Peter angrily. What? Cut to living room. Lois, I know what I did was wrong, but I only did it for you and the kids. Except for the jukebox in the bathroom. That one was for Peter. Yeah, from the American taxpayers. I am so mad I can't see straight. Ah, no problem. We got the money to get that fixed. With enough left over to us to buy our way out of any trouble our my kids get into. Just like the Kennedys. You know, I feel like I don't even know you anymore, Peter. The man I married would never think he could fix a problem just by spending money. Lois stomps off. Boy, she's pretty pissed. Yeah, who would have thought welfare fraud would be one of her buttons? What's the point of having a jukebox in the jan if your wife's <laughs> mad at you? Peter, you may have to return that money to the tax... Oh, no, that's Brian, sorry. Yep. <clears throat> Peter, you may have to return that money to the taxpayers. Yeah, but I gotta make sure I, Lois knows I'm doing it. I need to vent with thousands of people. Something that everybody cares about. We might have to leave Rhode Island for this one. The air is electric here at Super Bowl 33 tonight, Pat. I think it's safe to say all these fans came out here tonight to watch a game of football. Uh, John, we're in a commercial. Yeah, I know, I'm just making conversation. Come on! A large blimp that says, forgive me, Lois, flies over the football stadium. Amazing, amazing. You can barely drive and yet you're allowed to fly a blimp. Yeah, America's great, isn't it? Except for the South. Peter grabs a sack of money. Oh boy, I hope Lois is watching. Okay, taxpayers, here we go. Peter begins throwing all of the money out of the blimp and onto the football field. Looks like we're getting some rain here tonight, John. Yeah, wait a second, that's no ordinary rain. It's some kind of crazy money rain. I'm being told it's a man and his dog throwing cash out of a blimp. Oh man, I hope this works. Otherwise, I'm gonna have to start dropping these. Peter pulls out a ball that says, forgive me, Lois, and it's covered in spikes. The football field is being rushed with people grabbing the money. The cheerleaders are doing flips and random people are fighting. The crowd is storming the field. This is pandemonium. Have you ever seen anything like this, Pat? Just once, the 1975 Cotton Bowl. This is the old trying to make amends for spending $150,000 a week in misappropriated welfare funds play. I don't care what it is. This guy's ruining a perfectly good game of football. Matt into Fox Security. Go ahead. Take them down. Yes, sir. <laughs> Cut to jail. How was your shower? Oh, I tell you, Brian, all the rumors about dropping the soap are true. Really? Oh, yeah, you can't hold on to that thing to save your life. It was slipping all over the place. Guys were laughing. Two prisoners walk by Peter and Brian's cell and point at Peter. Hey, there's a guy that couldn't hold on to the soap. Huh, that was classic. Oh boy, I really let down Lois this time. Do you think she'll wait for me? Ah, oh, come on, Peter. If every woman dumped her husband for crashing a blimp in the Super Bowl, no one would be married. Yeah, you're right. Okay, I got the top bunk. Peter jumps onto the top bunk of the bed, causing the top bunk to fall on Brian. Cut to the Griffin's house. 
Lois, Meg, Chris, and Stewie are in the kitchen. Oh, the rest of my collagen is wearing off. Well, honey, sagging lips are just Nacia's way of telling you you shouldn't have covered for your father's lie. What does it mean when your armpits cry stinky tears? It means you're becoming a man, but hopefully not the kind who stayed out all night and doesn't call like your father who shall remain nameless. Hello, mother. Well, hi there, sweetie. You know, mother, life is like a box of chocolates. Stewie pulls out a box. You never know what you're going to get. Your life, however, is more like a box of active hand grenades. Stewie opens the box, revealing hand grenades. Now, I offer you one last chance for deliverance. Return my mind control device or be destroyed. Oh, you just want your toy back. OK, here you go, honey. Yes, well, victory is mine. Stewie runs into the living room, and the grenades blow up on him. Ah. The kitchen phone rings. Ring, ring. Hello? Oh my god. Cut to courthouse. Lois. Oh man, am I glad to see you. I have nothing to say to you, Peter. I gave the money back. Why are you still steamed? Peter, you lied to me. You betrayed my trust. Compared to that, welfare fraud doesn't even matter. Really? Uh, let's hope the judge feels that way. Uh, this court will now come to order. And Peter bang, goes bang. up to the stand. Well, you know, uh, I figured the sooner I cash the check, the sooner they catch their mistake. Look, why are we making a federal case about this? Mr. Griffin, don't you think you should have alerted the government of such a gross overpayment? Well, I was going to pay him, but my favorite episode of Different Strokes was on. You know, the one where Arnold and Dudley get sexually molested by the guy who owns the bike shop? The old owner of the bike shop is bent over in front of Arnold and Dudley. All right, boys, now I want you to scream real loud at my ass. Okay, everybody, I feel really bad about what I just did. I just, I don't know. I just saw one chance I'd ever get to give my family the things they deserve. I guess I screwed up. I cheated the government, and worst of all, I lied to my wife. And she deserves better. I'm sorry, honey. Mr. Griffin, I think your words have touched us all. I'm sentencing you to 24 months in prison. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, no. The Kool-Aid Man bursts through the wall. Oh, yeah! Excuse me, Your Honor? Yes? Look, my husband may be a bit thoughtless at times, and he may very well be downright stupid. But I know he's only accepted that money because he wanted to be a good husband and father. But what he needs to remember is that we love him. And no matter what, I'll always stand by him. Huh, I love you too, honey. That was very moving, Mrs. Griffin. Okay, you can go to jail with him. Why? 24 months in prison. Unacceptable. Intolerable as it may be. I'm completely dependent upon these wretched drones for sustenance. Let's see how the Constitution of American Justice fares against this device. Stewie pulls out his mind control device and points it at the judge. Is that your boy? Uh, oh yeah, that's Stewie. Gosh, I can't separate a kid from that young from his father. It's un unjudgmentally. Ah, uh, hell, you've learned your lesson, right? Yeah? All right, you're off the hook. Oh, wow. And you can give me my job back, too? No. Stewie points the mind control device at the judge again. Yes. All right. Cut to living room. The Griffins are in the living room watching bloopers on television. That was a crazy one, Dick. It sure was, Ed. And this next blooper from Joni Loves Chachi. Watch what happens when Scott Bayo tries to say she sells seashells down by the seashore. <clears throat> What does your mom do for a living? Oh, she sells seashells down by the... Ah! Ah! A bear jumps ah! through the wall and attacks Scott Bayo. Ah! That is kind of a tongue twister. It's good to have you home, PETA. Ah, oh, honey, I knew everything would turn out okay. I sure am going to miss being rich. Ah, don't worry, I know a way we can get money. Not another welfare scam. No, no, no. Minority scholarship. Peter puts on an afro wig. No. Are you insane? Oh, uh, <clears throat> okay, I mean, uh, uh, sexual harassment suit. Peter puts on a blonde wig and rips the front of his shirt. No, I don't think so. Absolutely outrageous. Oh, okay, uh, disability claim. Peter pulls out a baseball bat and hits himself in the face, instantly knocking himself out. 